All right, welcome to the refit screen. So to begin with, we're going to look at that stat that we uh, kind of ignored on the previous screen, which is ordinance points or OP. A hammerhead comes with 95 of them. This is different for every ship in the game. And it represents the logistical capacity of your ship. How many mods and weapons and stuff you can stick on your ship, flux vents, all those kind of things. Um, it can be increased by character skills in the loadout design tree. The third rank will give you plus 10% ordinance points. I strongly recommend you pick up this skill at some point in your playthrough. It doesn't have to be an early skill, but it is a very good skill. Um, it will just give you a direct upgrade to all of ships in your fleet. And uh, ships with more ordinance points are just better than those that have less because they allow them to add more vents, more capacitors, more hull mods, and better guns. So, you will fill up your ordnance points as you add weapons. If we remove weapons, you can see it decreases. Um, various weapons cost a certain number of ordnance points. This is a balancing attribute. Um, in general, guns that cost more ordnance points are considered better than ones that cost less. This is not always true, but it's a decent way to look at um, weapons and judge them. Uh, you say, oh, I have an anti-armor weapon that costs 7 ordnance points and one that costs maybe 10 or whatever. It's likely the one that costs 10 is better somehow, or at least it was balanced that way to cost more ordnance points because other factors were taken into account. All right, moving on. We have, well, an important thing I want to address before we actually do move on is uh, refitting your ships in space versus at a space station. Now, I removed a weapon there, and uh, we're at a space station right now. So let me uh, leave the space station and go back into the refit screen. So that my gun's still gone. If we put a gun on, you see right there, the change gives us a minus 15% CR from in space refit because I changed something while in space rather than in, with the help of a dock and so it reduces my combat readiness. Makes sense, you're making changes on the fly, this is going to reduce the readiness of your ship for combat. So in general, you want to avoid doing this because it's expensive, costs me basically a thousand credits to do it. You know, 100 credits, or 100, uh, bleh, costs 10 supplies and each supply costs 10, or 100 credits, therefore a thousand credits to make this change. We don't want to be doing that. Additionally, some hull mods cannot be done in space. They require a dock, additional berthing, auxiliary fuel tanks, etc. There are others beyond these, and uh, they can only be done at a dock. So if we got dock back up here with John Gala, we can see, uh, I'll refit, those are no longer gray, or red, or well, orange as they were before, they're no longer uh, being in shown as not doable like these right there they've been just gray if i remove some vents from my ships you can see we can add them so let's undo that all right the next thing is hotkeys there's obviously hotkeys weapon groups auto fit all this stuff that are listed but there's also shift shift will allow you to quickly remove vents. As you can see there, I dropped all 20 of them very quickly. If I just hold down normally without shift, it's very slow. Shift allows us to quickly add or remove vents, which is nice. There's also a hotkey which allows you to see all the weapon arcs on your ship. I do not remember what it is right now, and if I can find that out, I will add it as an annotation later. Okay, let's see. Next is hard points. Hard points are where you can put guns on your ship. Um, you, different ships will have different number of hard points. Uh, for example, the Lasher has that many. The Dram, which is a little tanker, only has a couple. It's got three. And the Hammerhead has quite a few, most of which are forward facing. Uh, where your hard points are set or like or, or pointing and what their arcs are as you can see these have different arcs that's a, a very wide angled gun it can fire over a very wide arc whereas this one here this hard point has a very narrow arc will determine how your ship fights 
Um, obviously, hammerheads are very forward focused as opposed to a lasher, which has a decent amount of arcs. It has two guns that are very forward facing, but it can still put up quite a bit of firepower across a very wide angle if you place the guns that way to be able to take advantage of it. Similarly, this little guy here, the Centurion, has very wide arcs. So take that into consideration when fitting your ships and uh, play them and fit them accordingly so that they can take advantage of their arcs as best they can, or make the most of them, I should say. Now, there are a number of different types of hardpoints, six to be precise. There are ballistic, energy, uh, missile, synergy, composite, and hybrid. So the first three, the ballistic, energy, and missile, are what we call simple mounts. They are just... They only fit one kind. They only fit ballistic, energy, or missile, respectively. The other three, synergy, composite, and hybrid, allow two different types, two of the simple types, to be fit. So that doesn't mean they allow two different guns to be fit simultaneously to the same hardpoint. It means you can fit either or. For example, this is a hybrid um, hardpoint as opposed to this one right here, which is a, well, this is a missile hardpoint. This is a small missile hardpoint, and it can only fit missiles. As you can see, they're all in little green boxes. Green is missile. And this here, this is a hybrid. You can see it can fit both ballistics and energy. Uh, the synergy is energy and missiles, and the composite is energy and or ballistic and missiles, I believe. Don't quote me on that. I could be mistaken. It's not super important. Just understand that those three types are allow two different types of weapons to be mounted. All right, there's three different sizes as well, small, medium, and large. I don't believe we have any large mounts available among all these ships, nope. But we do have two mediums here. These are medium ballistic mounts as shown by their double box. Um, and there will be a three box uh, shape around hard, large hard points. So it becomes a circle in the case of wider arced ones, but yeah, or I'm not sure what the color, what the shape is. But anyway, if it's a medium mount, it'll have three or two outlines, and for heavy, it'll have three. So yeah, small, 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 medium, and then large if you have them. Um, just a small note uh, for the simple mounts the ballistic energy and missile, the large mounts can fit the large weapons and anything smaller. So a large missile mount can also fit medium missiles and small missiles. Same is true with energy and ballistic. This is not true of the advanced mounts. A synergy mount cannot, or a, a large synergy mount cannot fit a medium energy weapon. It can only fit the large ones. A medium hybrid can only fit medium ballistic and energy weapons, etc. So keep that in mind. It's not terribly important. It's just, you'll be able to see in the, the screen is I just won't like here. This is a, a simple mount, simple medium. So it also lists the smalls because smalls can be fit on simple medium mounts. If this were a medium uh, hybrid, the small would not even show up here. So just keep that in mind so that you're not confused why your small weapons aren't appearing. Um, another note, as you can see here, the colors denote the source of the items to a degree. So open market, if you bought these, if, if you click on this, it'll purchase it from the market. As you can see, you bought heavy mortar for 936 credits. Um, you can also get them from the black market. They'll be in red. And uh, from your stores, your cargo holds will be in black. Um, if they cannot be fit, they'll also be in black. So keep that in mind. Not everything that's black is going to be in your cargo holds, but the ones in your cargo holds that you can also fit will be lit up as opposed to the ones you can't will be grayed out. You can filter them a bit by clicking up here if you want to get rid of illegal guns so that you don't accidentally buy them. You can filter out the illegal ones, or if you only want to buy 
illegal weapons, you can filter by illegal. You can also fi uh, filter by types. There are no energy or missiles available here, so it can only filter by ballistic. But yeah, so just so you know, those filters exist. They're nice and useful. Ah, moving on to weapon types. Now, there are a number of different weapon types in the game. Like I said, they're, they correspond to mounts, ballistic, energy, and missile. But each of those weapons can do a different type of damage. And it's not restricted to the weapon categories. There are energy weapons that do high explosive damage. There's energy weapons that do energy damage. There's energy weapons that do flux damage. And the same is true of ballistic weapons and missiles. The type of damage is very important and you must pay attention to it to be successful in this game. High explosive does 200% damage versus armor, 50% versus shields. If you look on the tooltip of this heavy mortar here, you can see that in the ancillary data there at the bottom. It's listed as explosive and it shows the multipliers. If we go over here to a railgun, it is a kinetic weapon. It does 200% versus shields and 50% versus armor. So obviously you want kinetic weapons to drop people's shields, to force them to lower their shields because if they don't lower them, they'll get um, overloaded. And then you want heavy weapons to take advantage of that and with or not heavy weapons i'm sorry high explosive weapons to take advantage of that vulnerability to blast through their armor because kinetic weapons are very bad at getting through armor energy weapons are a compromise between the two they have no multipliers and no weaknesses so well i guess that's true no multipliers either direction up or down which means they are not good at anything but they're not bad at it either so they can be very powerful in the right circumstances. And then there's another damage type that's not represented on the ship right now, but we do have on our lasher here, which is called fragmentation. Fragmentation is very weak versus shields and armor, but it does 100% versus hull. Now you might say to yourself, well, only 100% versus hull, that's not a multiplier. But the thing is, is that if we look here at this little dual auto cannon, this is a good gun. It does 143 damage per second there up in the primary data that's pretty decent dps especially when you consider the multiplier versus shields if we look here at this vulcan cannon with fragmentation damage it does 500 damage per second that's a lot like a whole lot if this thing hits your hull without any armor to protect it or shields it will shred you Absolutely. Fragmentation is devastating because fragmentation weapons tend to have extremely high DPS because of that one-fourth damage they do to basically everything but hull. Now, the majority of fragmentation weapons you will encounter in the game fall under the point defense category. Point defense weapons are different from normal guns, generalist weapons, in that point defense weapons will actively target missiles on their own. They do not require your intervention. If you have a point defense weapon and its weapon group is on auto fire, it will fire at any weapon or any missile that comes within its firing arc and range. This is not true of any other gun. If a missile, if we like, for instance, if we slap a, well, I have to take off some ordnance points to be able to fit this weapon because this is a four ordnance point gun and this is a five. This gun now, if even if missile flies right through the dual auto cannons field of view, it will never fire at it unless you actively force it to. Like if you click and try and intercept the weapon with your shot, it's, you can't target the missile with the R button in combat. You just have to try and time your shots so they actually physically hit the missile. It'll not do it on its own unless you have a hull mod that specifically imparts that point defense AI to the weapon. By default, only weapons listed as point defense weapons will have it, and they'll have that listed right here in their primary role. All right, so we're gonna undo that. Um, as I just mentioned, weapons have their OP. Um, the more ordnance points the cost, generally the better they are, it's not always true. Obviously, the heavy machine gun is listed as better than a light assault gun, but it, honestly, this is a point defense weapon it will be useless in many cases and the light assault gun is actually better because it has longer range and is designed to take out armor with high explosive um you want to pay attention to this range stat range is very important more is better there 
are ships designed to fight in close combat, but you, as a new player, you really want to stay away from people because if you can shoot them and they can't shoot you, you're going to win the fight probably. Um, the heavy mortar has 700 range, that's pretty good. And the railgun has 700 range, so you're going to be able to engage people from pretty far away with this. Alrighty, um, ammunition. Missiles are currently the only guns in the game that have actual ammunition other than, I believe, antimatter blasters, which are an energy weapon. Um, they have limited ammo, which means if you run out of ammo, you will not have any more for the duration of the battle unless you have a specific active ability that provides you more. Now, the default for the Harpoon MRM here, if you look in the, uh, the, the stat card there, it has limited ammo and then in parentheses three, which means it has by default three missiles. Now, because we have this hull mod here, expanded missile racks, that's increased to five, but without that, it's just three. And that's not represented in the little stat card there, unfortunately. And like I said, the antimatter blaster is an energy weapon that also has a limited ammo count, but all other weapons um, do not. Now there's some guns that have a burst fire count um, one you may encounter is called the auto pulse laser. It can store up a certain number of shots in its capacitor and then fire them all in a very fast burst. It doesn't have limited ammo, it just has limited charges and those charges regenerate slowly. So it has very high burst fire damage, but that damage decreases if it stays in contact with the enemy because it can fire faster than it can regenerate its shots. So it'll, it's after it expends its store of charged up shots its rate of fire will dramatically decrease so anyway if you if you see weapons that seem to have ammunition that's what it is because no guns other than the antimatter blaster and missiles have actual limited ammunition all right moving on we have loadouts so if we go here to auto fit these are loadouts these are the the little names here, if you see Balance Destroyer, Light Strike Carrier, Heavy Custom Frigate, that is derived from this right here. It just basically means that they are of this fit type, support overdriven balanced. These are just basically a fast way to fit your ships if you don't feel like you know, nitpicking and placing each weapon carefully. You can just go in here and say, oh, I want to you know, grab a support destroyer and just confirm, boom. It'll try and match the weapons as best it can to the weapon shown there. If it can't do that, it'll try and find something similar. For example, this thing's mounting a heavy mauler and a hypervelocity driver, neither of which we have. So, because the, the heavy mauler is a high explosive weapon and the hypervelocity driver is a kinetic weapon and they're both medium size, it will fit a medium high explosive weapon where the mauler was and a medium kinetic weapon where the hyper velocity driver was so it tries to fit it as best it can it has to fudge a little if you don't have the stuff available and it will tell you if it has to buy anything over here you have a whole bunch of toggles you can use to dictate how it's able to do that if you don't want it to buy from the market you just click that and it will no longer try but as you can see because it can't buy the arbalist cannon anymore because we don't have one in our inventory it'll pull a rail gun from our inventory instead. Now the rail gun's a small gun, which it doesn't want to put a small on there because that's a medium weapon, but because it doesn't have a choice, it'll just do best with what it can. So there we go, brings back the Arbalus. You don't want it using the black market, you can do that. Obviously purchasing from the black market will get people mad at you. If uh, you worry about that, don't do it. Um, and you can play with these. Uh, they're pretty self-explanatory. I don't tend to use this very often because I really like to spend a lot of time fitting out my ships but you know some people don't find that interesting that's a fast way to just get get through the screen and move on up next we have our capacitors and vents so on this screen you might notice that this is this, these stats are slightly different than the ones listed in the codex uh, most notably the flux capacity and flux dissipation and the hull integrity now, hull integrity, we'll talk about why that's lower in a minute, but flux capacity is higher and the flux dissipation are higher because we have more capacitors and vents. Each capacitor increases the flux capacity by 200 and each vent increases the dissipation by 10 flux per second. In the case of a, just, uh, let's see, in the case of the 
um, destroyer, the maximum number is listed there as 20. So you can only have 20 capacitors on your ship regardless of how many ordnance points you have left. So let's strip the ship. We have all of our ordnance points. We go boom. We're still limited to 20. Oh, there we go. If you hold down shift while not clicking anything else, there you go. You can see all your shit or your weapon arcs. Cool. Maybe that only works if no, it does. It's always there. That's neat. Okay. Sorry, I got distracted. So you want to put your capacitors and vents on. That'll increase your dissipation and your flux capacity beyond the base. There are very few circumstances where you don't want to add more of these because ships in general will have far higher um, flux production than they have dissipation. You want to get as much as you can increased because obviously flux is your enemy and will get you killed. So that's how you increase that. Um, you can also increase the maximum available through that skill um, loadout design right there. Uh, the level one and level two increase max flux and capacitors and vents respectively. Uh, in this case, it'll increase it up to a maximum of 24 and 24. So it's good to know. Uh, again, that's another reason why that is just a really good ability because you'll be able to vent faster than other people with similar loadouts. Moving on to hull mods. You can see here we have a built-in hull mod. It does, has no negative button next to it. This is remove. Um, things that cannot be removed. Uh, you cannot remove D mods, damage mods, like this one. This is a D mod, it's compromised hull. It reduces my hull integrity by 30%. That's why my hull is lower, is because I have a D mod. D mods are caused by ships getting blown up and recovered generally, or occasionally by how they are manufactured. That won't affect you right now. That only comes to, into effect when you start manufacturing ships at colonies, which I'll cover in a completely separate video. But the nice thing about D-Mods is they also decrease the uh, supply cost for recovery. So when you put the ship into battle uh, on the Kodak, Codex, if you remember, it listed the recovery cost as 10 supplies. Here it says eight. It still takes the same amount of time for the ship to recover from uh, its uh, combat readiness degradation that occurred as a result of combat. But the amount of supplies it costs you during that time is reduced due to the D mods, and that is cumulative. If you have more D mods, it will reduce that by more, I believe. I don't have any ship with multiple D mods to show you. Actually, let's look here and see if we can find one with a ton of D mods and see. No, really? Okay, these have three. Mm, but we don't know how much the ship originally cost. Still, I'm pretty certain that more D mods. Are, will stack up a higher um, reduction to your recovery cost. Not that that's something you should aim for. D mods are terrible and do horrible things to your ships. Compromised hull is one of the nicer ones. Um, some really ugly ones include degraded engines, which increase or decrease your speed on the map. Um, there's a one with a fuel regulator, a, a regular fuel reg regulator or something like that, that'll increase the fuel consumption on the map. Uh, there's other ones that they're all pretty nasty. Glitch sensor array reduces your weapon range in combat. Uh, yeah, you don't want these. But anyway, you can't remove them without restoring the ship. So you have to kind of balance how bad are your hull mods or your D mods versus how much does it cost to restore? Do you even want to have the ship in combat? You have to make that decision with salvaging. Oftentimes it's just not worth taking the ship with you. Um, these hull mods, however, are yours. They can be added and removed at will. Um, in most cases, this ship is a special case. I received it with something called the Integrated Targeting Unit, or ITU. This is a fantastic mod that increases the range of my guns. If I remove this, I cannot add it back because I do not have access to the information, the blueprint, I guess you could say, for this hull mods. For example, if I remove blast doors, let's see, undo, remove blast doors. If we go to add, I can put blast, mod, blast doors back on. I think I should be able to put expanded. Nope, I don't have expanded missile racks either. So if I remove either of those, 
with and then click out, I cannot put them back on. So as you go through the game, you will find these both at markets and even sometimes on fleets. Also while exploring, you can find them all over the place and they will increase your library of available hull mods. Um, the OP cost for hull mods is based upon the actual hull mod itself and upon the size of the ship you're flying. Blast doors for this ship is only 10 um, ordnance points. On a battleship, it might be 40. Uh, for the flux conduct or flux coil adjunct, it's four on frigates as a, and eight on destroyers. So, but even if you get like if you get the uh, the hull mod, it applies to all sizes of ships. You don't need different sizes of hull mod. It just, I'm saying, they cost different amounts when they're applied to different ships. Alrighty. So now that we've covered that, we can move on to weapon groups. This is probably one of the last things you'll do when refitting a ship after you've decided what guns you want, how many capacitors and vents you want. You'll go to weapon groups. And this is where you set up which weapons are assigned to which hotkeys in combat, and also whether or not they default to auto fire. Personally, I like to have my missiles on hot, or weapon group one, while the auto setup likes to put them on weapon group two for some reason. Um, I moved the multiple uh, weapons at the same time by holding on shift while clicking, just so you know. Um, because it just defaults to weapon one or weapon group one, I like to put the missiles there because I like to control my missiles. Uh, the AI tends to fire them off a bit liberally. And then I like to put all my other guns on uh, auto fire. And now you can switch whether or not your weapons are linked or alternating down here just by clicking. And this tells you how much flux per second sustained fire will produce. So the sum total of all of this minus your dissipation is how much flux per second you will generate firing all your guns and if you have your shield up with your shield. So obviously, I am going to produce significantly more flux per second than I can dissipate right now. So uh, I'm, I might want to change my loadout a bit or just be very cautious in combat not to get in situations where I have to have my shields up constantly and can't back off because obviously this setup is generating a lot of flux. It's very rare you'll find a ship that has neutral flux. It almost never happens unless you actively seek it out and it will usually deeply compromise your DPS to do so. So I wouldn't recommend aiming for that as a goal. Just keep it in mind and pay attention to how much, much flux each group is generating because you may want to turn one of them off at, in combat or all of them. So yeah, just, just remember that and it'll give you an idea which weapon groups also you should turn off first, for example. Um, last but not least, we have simulation and naming. We're going to do simulation first. So simulation is just where you can test out your ship against whatever you want to. It's a very fun thing. You can spend a lot of time in here dinking around with it. You can send a huge scary fleet after yourself. There we go. All of these ships are going to come in and they're going to blow me up because there's no way on earth a little hammerhead can fight a conquest and paragons and oh, look at all this. As you can see, all those different weapon types firing, and boom, there we go. I exploded because I ran out of hull points like we talked about. But if I press escape and end simulation, no harm, no foul. So this is a great way to test out your various loadouts. You can also bring in allies on your side, but they are only drawn from your own fleet. So you can't give yourself a paragon or anything, unfortunately. Um, as I mentioned before, the undo button will undo purchases even if you run a simulation, so don't worry about that. And then last but not least, we can change the name of our ship. So if we want to have our be the newbie tutorial, well, we'll call him Bob. This is our hammerhead Bob. Now this does not immediately change even though I've pressed enter, like all things. It can I can't be undone with the end the undo button sadly but it doesn't change up here until you click away. Now this is a, oh wait, it didn't change the name. 
Maybe because I hit the undo button. Let's try that again. I've never actually had that happen. There we go. Now the name changed. <laughs> or maybe I'm just tired and it changed. I didn't notice. Anyway, that's how you change the name. You can also change the classification. We'll call this a standard destroyer. And now you can see this is a standard destroyer. And there you go. That is the basics of uh, the refit screen. If you guys have any questions, um, let me know. Oh, one other thing. This will list any commander you have. You can switch them here if you want. You can also switch them on the fleet screen by clicking there and assigning them however you want. So that's, that's the last thing. Um, your officers can have crew skills that can affect your stats. And uh, yeah, so like I said, if you have any more questions about how the refit screen works, uh, just drop me a comment on the video. I'll take a look at it, or you can drop by the Discord as listed in the, uh, the description. And um, I think the next video I'm going to do will probably cover what to do next in the game, since a lot of people seem to be a little concerned about where to just go next. I mean, there, it's true, there's a lot of options and none of them are really obviously the best choice for a new player so i'll probably go through a few of those so you can see where you should be uh, looking to head next and so yeah thanks for watching and i'll see you next time